Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about lines of code. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, do you think that the best programmers use fewer lines of code than the bad ones, as is consistent with my experience? No, I don't think so. I think that the best programmers use the appropriate amount of code regardless of what the situation is. What I see is true. I, I will give you, because I, I, I don't want to be a one of those annoying people who know that there are many ways of looking at something or at a statement and then picking the one that gets me, it gets, it allows me to correct you. Because I'm more focused on uh, being smug and hearing the sound of my own voice than to try to understand your position. I agree with you to a point. I agree that usually you see the absolute worst programmers. I mean most of the time they won't even be able to produce the results or they will do things in a very messy way. Like they, they will confuse themselves or they will start on a solution and they can't really seem to fit the problem in their head so they create a very verbose solution or a very complicated solution usually and the people who are kind who are the good developers they usually have a very straightforward solution like they kind of just yeah, yeah, I know exactly more or less how to structure this code so that it is as efficient as it can be or at the very least when we speak about efficiency, we're not necessarily talking about execution speed. We're just talking about a, a balance between performance in terms of how much work are you actually doing in, the, in, the, in your logic versus comprehension. And that is the key thing. However, I've also seen a few, uh, quite often the reverse happen with what I like to call philosopher programmers, where what they basically do is that they uh, they overcomplicate the problem. They reduce the amount of lines, but they actually complicate the problem enormously, when it would have been much more appropriate to just use more lines of code to solve this problem so that it stays sustainable. Because philosopher programmers, what they do usually do is that they get very obsessed with design patterns and more advanced concepts and they will as I like to say a, a good chef knows how to use spices because these patterns are spices you take a pinch and then you sprinkle it when the when it's appropriate to do so but philosopher programmers they take a full fistful every time and just shove it in because they can't understand the proportion of the problem that they're dealing with so in they they go to the extreme of things like they think that something if it's if something is considered a best practice well then I should do that thing all the time and then it becomes an anti-pattern because you're not actually using the tool correctly you you are using a best practice as we like to call it but you're doing so in an incorrect fashion and then there are people who really do follow the the strictest definitions of well, I wouldn't. I, there are some people who will follow the strictest definitions of best practices in this fashion and really mess up the code. But you also have people who are not necessarily using design patterns. They invent their own solutions that they feel are that feel that feel that this is very effective and it's very efficient and so forth. And usually, the more experienced programmers they don't go down this route because they kind of already know how it's going to end. They know that it's going to cause a lot of problems and in this specific scenario it's actually e better for you to just keep it simple stupid and even though it might be a little bit of an anti-pattern in many other situ situations it's actually the best case uh, here I'll give you an example which I see that from my own work this was a few years ago now so my company had a uh, made a decision uh, at that time to go to a multi-market application many different markets international product right and so we had the discussion of course we are going to move this code base that was written for one country it's now going to support multiple countries and there was a discussion amongst the engineers and the engineers who thought they were, were really quite clever they said well you know what we should create a um, 
a compile time error if we if, if we try to compile a piece of logic that is specific to one market so in other words we're going to create a type signature that states that all right this logic here can only be instantiated in say Sweden or America in North America or in uh, in uh, in France or whatever right and that way we will have a compile time error that is going to allow us to um, to segment our code so that we never get into a position where we might start the application in the wrong market. And so I told them I don't think that that is a good idea because what's going to happen is that you're now going to instead of using something very simple as say dependency injection which is the norm if you are going to use because basically the problem that you are solving is a dependency injection problem. You have a different logic that needs to execute at different times. And as I told them, the, the, you, you're right now only creating a, you're creating a situation where you're trying to you're trying to solve your problem at compile time, but that may not always be the case. It might actually be much easier for you to just instantiate all the things, or at the very least, have some type of uh, lazy instantiation system, the lazy instantiate um, your references so, you know, for the different market specific pieces of logic at runtime. And of course, that is a very bad thing for because now the philosophers are going to say, oh, but Frederick, runtime uh, compilation is the worst thing ever. Or runtime is much worse than uh, compile time. And I go, absolutely. There's no discussion that if you can find something at compile time, that's better. But what you will do is that you will ha you will force us into a situation where now we will have to have various modules and compile time uh, logic to verify that you're starting in the right uh, you're starting in the right market and you're also going to limit your ability to you're, you're gonna have to duplicate all that logic like all the logic that you could possibly create needs to now be duplicated for all these markets and you're also going to force yourself into a situation where you can't actually make runtime decisions because you have instantiated a, a specific market. In other words, there's a now a one-to-one -one mapping between each instance of your application and whatever market you're running on, and that's not a very good. It's that's that's probably not a good idea. It's probably more efficient to just create a independence injection solution. Said and done. Uh, downvoted on that topic. Two years later, we are now doing exactly the thing that I said that we're doing. It takes more clients of code. There is more code, like you, because the solution that I proposed was very simple. The solution was that, all right, because the counter argument was, but Frederick, how can we keep track of all of these instantiations of different markets? And I said, it's very simple: create a auto loader, an auto loader file or a bootloader file. Just uh, if you take inspiration from how PHP usually does it, that is the, in my opinion the best and most simple way that you can use dependency injection. Nothing even gets close. Java has it wrong, C Sharp has it wrong. I would say that practically all of the... Uh, I mean, uh, of course, this is up for discussion, but there is nothing simpler than simply having a single big super file that has all your instantiated services, the entire service layer, because there's no way for you to get into a position where you might need, it, where you have a circular dependency or where you're trying to access a service from one specific service but you can't actually do that because there's no way for you to inject it. If you um, if you simply do it this way, it, it, although the file itself is very very large or it's a very long file, that doesn't really matter because it's very simple. Any idiot can literally go in at any point and like just put in their new piece of logic and just continuously expand on that file. You can of course segment it a little bit, but the the structure is uh, it, it it becomes the simplest thing that you can possibly build. And said and done. Finally, we realize after two years of having ma massive issues with with exactly the thing I was explaining, uh, we got to a point now where people just said, you know what, we should probably just simplify this. And then I made a push and we moved over to this other thing. So although we were writing more code, all of our developers became much more productive because they didn't have to write multiple versions of the same test. They could just dependency inject things. So what I want you to take away from this is that there's absolutely a correlation you, on average between 
lines of code and good solutions. On average you find that if you have a good solution it should be a sort of elegant solution uh, and in many cases it may not take all that many lines of code to solve the problem. Just, But I also want you to understand that lines of code is not the best indicator to whether or not you have a good solution or the best programmer who is solving the problem. It also comes down to how sustainable is this solution because in some cases such as in my little story here the sustainable solution was actually to break a best practice which is you know keep your files small and this file was several thousand uh, it was uh, over a thousand lines of code but it was basically just declarations the entire way there's no logic there's no cognitive overhead it's the simplest dumbest thing that you can possibly imagine it's just big yeah. and the trade-off that we got from that was that everybody became very productive very easily. All our new hires understood immediately how to work with the system. There was no problem, but the more advanced solution that reduced down the, uh, the size of this giant dependency file, it actually created a much messier code base that caused other sorts of problems. So remember that a good solution does not necessarily mean that there's fewer lines of code. It simply means that it's more sustainable. Have a great day.